Merry meet and welcome everyone. I wanted to come on here and give an astrology update. We've got a lot of intense energy going on, especially, and it takes us back to the Mars and oh, the energy that he can carry sometimes when he has squares um, with other planets that are very powerful, such as Pluto. But right now I want to talk about Libra. <clears throat> And today we are in the last day of Libra, and it is so important to um, take a moment um, and think about Libra. Um, this is a good time to stop picking a side, stop identifying with this or with that. It is about harmony and finding a balance. Um, it is time to stop identifying yourself with um, one thing or another and it's about aiming for the middle and it's about seeing the bigger picture of it all you know um, we do live in a world of polarity and you know where there is light there is dark but we are supposed to be the ones that bring um, more of that understanding to our I should say a balancing to that we have that ability to bring in a, a balancing energy to that equation and in Libra we search for the middle ground Libra is about finding that balance within relations and it's about bringing harmony there um you know we're having to exist on this earth together and it is better and a more evolved viewpoint if we look at the bigger picture and understand that we need to stop being so petty in certain things. Um, the sun enters Scorpio tomorrow, the 22nd, I'm sorry, on the 23rd, and it will enter uh, Scorpio at 1221 p.m. and that's Eastern Daylight Savings Time. And this is going to take us into the underworld and it's going to show us how to release our old identities um, that we have been holding on to for so long and so tight. Sometimes those identities can become the way that we identify ourselves and we kind of get lost because many, uh, you know, many of us, all of us in this world are brought into families that you know kind of set a precedent for the way that we should believe and and the way that we should act and as we grow you know we should be bringing that to a higher place and to a higher understanding and therefore more of um more of a a, a coexistence kind of situation and um you know, we have a moment to go, you know, and at that time when, when the sun moves into Scorpio, we're going to have a moment to go into that subconscious and um, to release those beliefs that are, you know, hidden. Maybe we didn't know we have still had them and so forth. Um, thoughts of the past that we, um, you know, just let go of those thoughts and it's time to give birth to something new. Samhain, um, Samhain, um, which is commonly nowadays called Halloween, but to the old holy day, uh, Samhain, um, this is about bringing the light into the dark, the bonfires. Um, I'll be talking more about that, but it won't be in an astrological um, sense. It will be more of um, more of an energetic sense of this time of year, and that will be a separate video. But um, when we are, you know, the Samhain festival is about bringing the light into the darkness, the big bonfires, right? And when doing so, we illuminate those things that are hidden, those things that have been out of sight, out of mind. And it seems that we have been doing this for a few years now. Um, Scorpio's planet nowadays is Pluto. And Pluto has been really uh, playing a big part in astrology, um, especially for the United States for a few years now. And when he was in Capricorn, and he's still in Capricorn right now, um, 
he is working on um, those top-down institutes and entities. Uh, Pluto being in Capricorn is about exposing those top-down entities and those people um, those certain organizations that have gained way too much power and have begun to use it, uh, abuse it, I should say. It goes into exposing those. Um, Pluto is about power and it is about exposing. It's, it's going to dredge up all of that that has been hidden from plain sight. Um, and it will look at those that have the power and those that are abusing it. He's going to destroy that. So uh, we are seeing the corruption um, nowadays that is being visibly exposed. I mean, we are visibly we can't uh, we can't turn on the TV or watch the news without being bombarded with um all of this stuff that's being exposed, our government leader, leaders nowadays are not being fact-checked um, like they used to uh, be fact-checked. We're seeing that. Um, those that are that have been speaking the truth about things are being um, ostracized and um, demonized and looked down on, and um, we're being blatantly lied to. Um, by government officials and when they are questioned you know those questions are ignored so we're seeing this played out time and time again we are seeing um banana republic type of leadership in those governments so um you know wars are ge gearing up right now there you know we are seeing all of this upheaval all of this um you know, Mars being in Scorpio now, we're seeing this happen, right? Um, propaganda is flying. And again, we are being shown the games um, that are being played to our, the people's expense uh, and demise at that. Uh, we are seeing that it's all about certain people's pockets being lined instead of what is good for the public. It's not about working for the people it's about working for those top-down entities that can contain more power um and i'm going to talk about that in a little bit because there's some more placements that are happening that i think is very critical uh to talk about uh today mercury is at zero degrees of um of Scorpio and he is squaring Pluto in Cap in Capricorn. Pluto is direct. Remember I told you in our I think it was the last show that Pl Pluto has went direct. It might have been I might have posted it. It might have been a little post, but um so we could be hearing some news that support um this what I'm talking about um when Pluto when Mercury is our messenger and he's going into Scorpio um yeah, news is going to come out about that under the underbelly. Uh, Scorpio is also connected to money, and this is shared money. So like stock markets or um, money that is being shared with different entities, that sort of thing. Um, so uh, Libra teaches us, you, you know, Libra is um, opposite of Aries, and I am an Aries sun and a rising. So um this is the opposite of mine and libra is about um looking at both sides and that's why whenever mars is in libra he's a little bit um his ruffles are feathered because he wants to act he, he's kind of like in a detriment in libra because he he wants to act he wants to do he has that passion to go but libra saying wait a minute it's wait a minute this is not right we got to weigh the situation um libra can sometimes take too long to weigh that situation and the the whole <laughs> the whole situation will be gone and libra will uh, miss out on that if you ever talk to some libras they'll probably you know tell you about that but um libra teaches us um that what is being put before us is just one part of the story we must see all sides of the story 
we can't just look at this. We have to consider this. And we also have to consider all the others, um, all the other situations, the information and um, all of that. We have to consider all of that. But how do we, when so many are continuing um, to hold on to hold on to those long held um, beliefs, uh, such as, um, you know, and these are things that we have been, I think that, you know, right, we can say brainwashed, but it's something that we have been conditioned to believe. Um, and it's really, we have to look at this, is this really what you believe now? Is this really what re resonates with you and you have to do your own research you have to um get out there and research what you think so all of these beliefs that you have are these beliefs are they coming from your experiences and what you have found out what you have researched and what you know you have seen with your physical eye is are those beliefs that you hold so dear to you are they in alignment with that and if not why are you still believing those? And um, I think that, you know, we have to, we can't go along with that popular belief because it's what everybody else believes. Um, no, not necessarily. You know, you, you have to gain. That's why we have, you know, we are unique beings and we can have our own thoughts and our own feelings and our own beliefs and we can create those. Uh, Mark Twain is quoted as saying, whenever you find yourself on the side of the majority, it is time to pause and reflect. And I really feel that is coming into play this time of the year. This is the harvest time uh, for those of us in northern in the northern hemisphere. And this is a time of reflection. So this is very much that it's like the people that you associate yourself with, are they really in alignment with what you believe? We talk about being with our own tribe. Um, this is going down and breaking down through many different layers that we're not really uh, fully understanding. I spoke before in a past show about organizations being dismantled, and I believe it was on one of the last Astro uh, Tarot shows that I did. Um, this is, and I was talking about how these long held um, um, organizations are starting to crumble apart, and it's, and we're still seeing this. And this is simply because we are in a, uh, we're in a point of change. Things are changing. The energy is changing. You know, with Pluto going direct in Capricorn, he is inching, um, you know, closer and closer to Aquarius. Now, of course, he will move back into uh, Capricorn next. As he'll move into uh, Aquarius in January, and then he'll be uh, retrograding again and moving back to Capricorn. Um, and then I think by September of 2024, he'll be back into Aquarius for good. And I could be wrong on that. Uh, I don't think I wrote that down, but um, I will I will verify that in a different show. So um, with this, it's looking, you know, when he is looking at um, Aquarius, Aquarius represents the people. So this is about power to the people. This is about a transference of power from those top-down institutes and those ruling institutes and, and government, those sort of things, going from their hands into those of the people. And that is a definite shift. So, um, and, you know, we're going to see that. We have to, uh, we're going to be looking and continue looking at these organizations. Are they supporting the people that they are supposed to support and, and protecting the people that they are supposed to protect? Or is this just a get rich, rich scheme that these people are showing? And I do see um, a couple of organizations that that is going through right now. It was all about making the money. It wasn't about the people. It wasn't about what was happening. It was about taking advantage of a situation. And we do see that. So 
let's move to Venus. Now, Venus is our planet of love, right? She wants, she wants harmony as well. She wants peace and love and, and just, you know, ah, uh, she's in the spa and she wants everybody to be in the spa and enjoying themselves, right? Just soaking up the, the nectar of life and just the luxuries and, and that sort of thing. But right now, Venus is in Virgo, and this is not a good placement for her. She's a little uncomfortable here because um, here she's having to really tend to those details. Um, this can have us feeling a little nitpicky on some things, maybe a little um, our feathers ruffled. Um, and we could be a little too critical of ourselves during this time. Uh, we could find ourselves struggling with perfection. So please watch out with that. You are not perfect. You are only human. You're going to make mistakes. That is how you grow. That is how you learn. That is how you experience life. So don't be too hard on yourself. And, you know, I'm that way. I can be so hard on myself because, you know, I don't, I'm not one that competes with other people. I compete with myself. And those standards are pretty high and I, they're, they're higher for me than they are other people. And it shouldn't be that way. We should so, show ourselves a little bit of grace too. Yes, of course, challenge yourself and push yourself and, and see how you can grow and what you can grow into to be your, the highest form, uh, you know, the highest um, potential, right? Yes, what you want to do. But, you know, at times we do have to remember that we are only human and we can only do so much at one given time. We are one person. So we have to think about that. Um, Venus is all about relationships as well. And Virgo is about practical love. So this is um, with Venus and Virgo, it's about expressing affection through thoughtful acts um, and paying attention to the detail. You know, it's those, it's not the big things, it's the small things kind of um, kind of way. This is uh, Venus and Virgo is looking at those little, little things, the little sweet things. Um, they value relationships that will share their values and their work ethics because Virgo is about being in service to others. So this is, you know, that is a uh, service is something that is expected to be rendered at this time. Um, you know, this is the energy of wanting stability. It's wanting stability and to being able um, to do things in a certain way. Okay. Um, this is the energy about finding beauty in order and in organization. So everything is, has a place kind of thing. Uh, Venus is having a nice little connection with Jupiter right now. And um, this is going to bring us ease as well as abundance. Remember, Jupiter is like Santa Claus. He wants to, he wants to everybody to be happy and merry and, you know, the more the merrier. And he is in Taurus, which is Venus's sign. So this is really giving Venus some energy so that she can push forward in Virgo. <clears throat> like I stated, um, Virgo is not an easy sign for Venus to be in. So this is really giving her some energy that she needs. Um, this is also about finding joy in the practical um, and about um, in practical, um, nurturing ways in relationships. Um, this is great energy for attracting, um, financial opportunities. Um, this is definitely our harmonious blend of earthy energies that can lead us to prosperity, um, contentment, and, and a love for life's simple pleasures. So that is, you know, because Venus is extravagant, right? She wants everything. She wants the champagne, the lights, just all of that. But in Virgo, she's brought down to earth a little bit and said, hey, these are the things that are really important. Yes, the, the all those things that shine are very beautiful. But what happens when those are gone? Because physical things come and go, right? And it's about having the depth. It's about having um, 
what is going to be good for you, what you are going to be able to use and bring forward uh, for the future, not just for the right now. Um, you know, when we had Venus and Taurus and Jupiter, you know, and Taurus, I mean, that that's energy about extravagance to that spending way too much and going crazy with that. And, you know, Jupiter is saying, you can have fun, you can have that, but you need to look at it at a more practical way and one that is going to feed you, not just for the moment and today, but for years to come. So it's the simple pleasures. It's the simple pleasures. It's watching the sunrise, watching the sunset, watching the moon rise, going for a walk on the beach, going for a walk in the woods, um, those kind of things. So that is one thing that we can be experience and experiencing during this time. Um, also today, Mars is at six degrees of Scorpio and this energy embodies intense <laughs> determination as well as passion. Um, this energy is fearless and it's relentless. And especially when it's going after what it wants, this is about doing everything it needs to do to obtain its desires. Um, Mars and Scorpio is relentless at pursuing its, its wants and desires. Uh, the key word for Scorpio is transformation. So making, um, this is making, um, making one easier to flow through all of the changes and endeavors or endeavors that may be happening and, um, making them formidable in matters of love and um, ambition and confronting challenges head on. So this is great energy for going after what you want, what you desire. Um, you know, we have Venus in Virgo that is bringing us down to earth and making us see, um, looking at practical things. This is bringing us into a focus here that is really needed um, because as we look at our world, we can see our world is, is scattered there's a lot of chaos. So, you know, it's up to us to bring some focus, bring things into focus so that we can make things move in a way that is going to be beneficial for all. So, you know, you know, confronting those challenges head on and saying, I can take this, I got this. Mars and Scorpio is having a warm connection uh, to Vista in Cancer. So this combines deep emotional drive with nurturing um, dedication. Vesta is very dedicated. She was, you know, Vesta was one of those. Um, she was a very dedicated uh, goddess to her marriage and it was going to happen. And this is about using that again focus, being dedicated um, to what you want, being dedicated to yourself, to the relationship with yourself. Um, this energy can have us attuned to our home and family. Um, that can be a priority for some. Uh, this is very passionate energy and it's about channeling it into a um, secure and harmonious environment. Um, here, we are balancing our personal desires um, and what we are wanting to go after at, with tending to our hearth, meaning what we want with balancing it with our family life and our home. Um, this is fostering very strong bonds as well as domestic tranquility. So this is good energy for that. This is really good of, um, of building that and, um, you know, it looks bad on, it, it can, you know, it can look bad on the outside, but it's bringing us in. It's bringing us back to ourselves and teaching us that, you know, to stop looking on the outside, stop looking for those outer things to complete us, to fulfill us, that it's time to look at home. It's time to look at ourselves. It's time to look at our family. It's time to look at our home. If, you know, if we are unhappy at home, we are unhappy at life. Um, and you can see those people that are unhappy. Those are the ones that are always criticizing, that are always doing that. You can see this. But here we're wanting to bring that in. Um, 
The sun is at 28 degrees of Libra today and is inching away from the south node, whom he has been visiting for a few days now. Um, we are trying to make, with this situation, we're trying to make some peace with our path. The south node, it represents where we have been, and it is in Libra. So it is, uh, we are looking at those way where we have sacrificed ourselves in relationships um, those things that were not, um, we were giving more in relationships than we were getting. We were depleting ourselves. Um, that's not a healthy way. We have to make sure that we are taking care of our vessel. Um, and if we are allowing people to take advantage of us and to, um, uh, take our weakness for a kindness and take advantage of us, uh, we are not uh, taking care of our vessel, our temple. So um, we could also be looking at, you know, with with uh, the sun in Libra, with the with the uh, south node, we could be looking at times in our past where um, maybe we were not uh, so fair. Maybe we didn't pay as much attention to those relationships as we should. Maybe we didn't, um, we wasn't, we, we were not harmonious. We were not bringing harmony into that. And we're just having to uh, forgive ourselves for some of our past endeavors and um, to bring peace to our past. Um, you know, just trying to level out our skills, so to speak, with our past so we can move forwards and we can transform um, those energies into something better. When the sun moves into Scorpio, this is when, you know, we are looking at transforming that. So the sun will be moving um into Scorpio, you may hear it as an ingress. It's ingressing into Scorpio on October the 24th at 12 21 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time and will be there until November the 22nd. Uh, Scorpio's phrase is I desire. And this will bring intense transformative qualities um, to the uh to the high to the uh, forefront uh scorpios are known for the deep emotions um very resilient and um, very determined very stubborn <laughs> uh, so it can be an immense time for healing and transformative energy uh, with the sun going into Scorpio, going into the underworld. That is not what the, the uh, fire and brimstone. That is not the underworld. OK, that is a religious point of view. What I'm talking about is the underworld. And that is where we go to heal. That is where we go to reflect. That is where we go to um to release, to let go, that sort of thing. So this is energy that can bring us immense healing, okay? As allowing us to transform our lives in a way that will be better for us. Uh, we do have to watch out for Scorpio energy um, because it can be a jealous energy. It can be vindictive um, as well as um, it can be the energy of beating a dead horse. So we need to watch out for that and to not be manipulative because I desire, Scorpio desires. And with Mars and Scorpio too, this is about going after what we want. So we have to be cautious as we are not being manipulative to others and um, while we are trying to get those things that we want. Uh, this astrological placement encourages um, exploration of the hidden parts of ourselves, um, as well as a desire for self-renewal. Um, you know, one of the things that um, makes Scorpio powerful is the ability to transform, to take an energy and transform it into another thing. So this is very powerful energy. It's... Um, and it's very um, emotionally perceptive. So um, this is, you know, we, our uh, intuition can be heightened at this time. Also, when um, the sun is in Scorpio, I always say, you know, pay special attention to your dreams. Because uh, sometimes that is how um, we can talk to ourselves. So we can get those messages we need. Um 
and also with Mars being in Scorpio, uh, we are more likely to sp uh, prosper uh, through strategy. And we will need to exercise discernment. We need to understand um, those things that we need to say and those things that we don't need to say. Um, you know, we everybody doesn't need to know our every move. We don't owe everyone an explanation. We don't have to ex explain ourselves away to people. Uh, we have to learn what we need to say out loud and what we need to keep within. Uh, we need to learn um, when when is the right time to say the right thing. So. Again, not everybody needs to know your playbook. Not everybody needs to know what you're going. I think with um, what you're going through, I think with social media nowadays, everybody just feels this, this overwhelming sensation to post everything about their life. And it's like, people don't want to hear your dirty laundry. Um, if you're going through something, you're going through something. And that's one thing. But a lot of people are sharing things that really they don't need to be sharing. And it's it's it doesn't... It, you know, it, it, and I understand that that's a part of the vulnerability and that is true and one should be able to express themselves, but we should do that in an environment where it's going to be of bene be beneficial to ourselves, not just casting it out there amongst everything and scattering our energy. When we are going through these challenges, we need to, of course, we need to have, um, you know, really our friends sometimes to talk to and, and help us work through these. That's completely fine. That's not what I'm talking about. Uh, what I'm talking about is spreading it out just to get that sort of attention that you're craving. That sort of attention is something that is a part of that. Um, it can be looked at that negative side of Scorpio. So, um, you know, not everybody needs to know what you're going through. Not everybody needs to know that you have, you're supposed to have a close circle and that close circle are those that should be helping you and those that should be giving you not just agreeing with you, but should also help you look at other sides because that's what Scorpio's gift is, is to teach us to look at another side, to weigh the options, to weigh the information. And, um, you know, your friends shouldn't just be going along with you and whatever. Um, well, sure, they want you to have, you know, you go f after whatever you want. But at the same time, you don't need to be so narrow sighted with it. You need to have a clear view of all that's going on. With the sun in, Scor in Scorpio, this will be a great time to repurpose, to recycle, um, to salvage and to transform form things um so if there's relationships that you're working on that sort of things this could be a time that you can um you know repair some of that um if there's things that you have in your life that are not being used it's either to recycle them you know give them away give them to somebody who can or transform them into something else that's going to be of good benefit for you um, we are especially successful um, at organizing, researching, investigating, and analyzing. That's going to be heightened. Um, but again, with Scorpio, we 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 do have um, the inclination to be extreme on things. So we have to be careful with that. Um, and we, you know, we can. We will have the energy to meet those challenges head on, our crisis, whatever it may be. And um, we could be compelled to heal it, to fix it, um, direct it in a certain way or manage. So all of these energies are happening. And I really wanted to come on here and talk about this because this is a change. The sun is moving. This is a definite change that we are feeling. And it will, in, in all of these different situations that's going on, um, we can see how, how they are impacting our world. It's really given us a, or me, 
Um, it's giving me a new look at as above, so below, because as I read this astrology and then I see things that happen, I'm seeing how these different um, connections are playing out in our physical world. And it's um, it's one that tells us that these energies are happening true, but it's not that we are incapable of doing anything about it it's just how we go about doing it are we going to make it worse or are we going to make it better and that is the biggest question are we going to transform this into something higher or something better or something um that is more practical and 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 for everyone for the people or is it just going to be as it always has been there's where we are so anyway that is it for this little astro blurb here uh, um i hope you enjoyed it we do have a, a full moon coming up next week which will also be the um i think it is on the 28th of October and um, that will be a lunar eclipse. This is going to be in Taurus. So this again is going to be some energy that's going to be changing. We just had our solar eclipse, right? So after we have a solar eclipse, what are we going to have? Yep. A lunar. So this is going to, um, this is going to touch us in our emotional, the sun's the father and, and how, you know, that, that power, you know, that fa the father figure, whereas the moon is the mother and it, and it deals with our emotions. So, um, yeah, within Taurus, it could be looking at those things that we are physically attached to. So anyway, I'll save that for another time. I'll do another video on that. And I hope you enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, I will leave my information in the, um, in the description so you can get in contact with me. And um, I appreciate you watching and I appreciate you listening wherever you are in the world. I offer you many, many blessings. Till next time.